Paine attacked the Trinity and the Bible both. He had done these things openly. His arguments were so good that his reputation got bad. I want you to recollect tonight that he was the first man who wrote these words. The United States of America. I want you to know tonight that he was the first man who suggested the federal constitution. I want you to know that he did more for the actual separation from Great Britain than any man that ever lived. I want you to know that he did as much for liberty with his pen as any soldier did with his sword. I want you to know that during the revolution, his crisis was the pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. I want you to know that his common sense was the one star in the horizon of despotism. I want you to know that he did as much as any living man to give our free flag to the free air. He was not content to waste all his energies here. When the volcano covered Europe with the shreds of robes and broken fragments of thrones, Payne went to France. He was elected by four constituencies. He had the courage to vote against the death of Louis and was imprisoned. He wrote to Washington, the president, and asked him to interfere. Washington threw the letter in the waste basket of forgetfulness. When Payne was finally released, he gave his opinion of George Washington, and under such circumstances, I say a man can be pardoned for having said even unjust things. The 18th century was crowning its gray hairs with the wreaths of progress, and Thomas Paine said, I will do something to liberate mankind from superstition. He wrote The Age of Reason. For his good, he wrote it too soon. For hours, not a day too quick. From that moment, he was a despised and calumniated man. When he came back to this country, he could not safely walk the streets for fear of being mobbed. Under the Constitution he had suggested, his rights were not safe. Under the flag that he had helped give to heaven, with which he had enriched the air, his liberty was not safe. Is it not a disgrace to us that all the lies that have been told about him and will be told about him are a perpetual disgrace? I tell you that upon the grave of Thomas Paine, the churches of America have sacrificed their reputation for veracity. Who can hate a man with a creed? I believe in one God and no more, and I hope for immortality. I believe in the equality of man, and that religious duty consists in doing justice, in doing mercy, and in endeavoring to make our fellow creatures happy. It is necessary to the happiness of man that he be faithful to himself. One good schoolmaster is worth a thousand priests. Man has no property in man and the key of heaven is in the keeping of no saint. Grand, splendid, brave man, with some faults, with many virtues. The world is better because he lived, and if Thomas Paine had not lived, I could not have delivered this lecture here tonight. Did all the priests of Rome increase the mental wealth of man as much as Bruno? Did all the priests of France do as great a work for the civilization of this world as Diderot and Voltaire? Did all the ministers of Scotland add as much to the sum of human knowledge as David Hume? Have all the clergymen, monks, friars, ministers, priests, bishops, cardinals, and popes from the day of Pentecost to the last election done as much for human liberty as Thomas Paine? What would the world be now if infidels had never been? Infidels have been the flower of all this world. Recollect by infidels, I mean every man who has made an intellectual advance. By orthodox, I mean a gentleman who is petrified in his mind. 
whopping around intellectually simply to save the funeral expenses of his soul. Infidels are the creditors of all the years to come. They have made this world fit to live in, and without them the human brain would be as empty as the chronicles soon will be. Unless they preach something that the people want to hear, it is not a crime to benefit our fellow man intellectually. The churches point to their decayed saints and their crumbled popes and say, Do you know more than all the ministers that ever lived? And without the slightest egotism or blush, I say, Yes, and the name of Humboldt outweighs them all. The men who stand in the front rank, the men who know most of the secrets of nature, the men who know most, are today the advanced infidels of this world. I have lived long enough to see the brand of intellectual inferiority on every orthodox brain. End of Ingersoll's Lecture on the Great Infidels this is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. Ingersoll's Lecture on the Great Infidels from the book Lectures of Colonel Robert Green Ingersoll, read for you by Ted DeLorme in Fort Mill, South Carolina, during June 2007.